That's all. <sighs> We've made it. We've made it to packet eight. And I have good news. This is probably going to be the easiest and fastest one we'll do. So let's take a look at problem one, two, three. We're given a graph and I have two sets of data, the hours of sleep and the test score. And it seems the more hours someone sleeps, the higher their test score is. What's that called? That is called a positive correlation. Positive correlation. Draw the line of best fit. I got you. Your line of best fit is going to be a line that's going to sit as much in the middle of all of your dots as possible. Is it going to hit every single dot? No, but it basically it follows where the dots go. So that if this dot or these dots were to keep on going, um, you know, we can kind of make predictions based off of that. And so I'm happy with that line right there. See how my uh, graph just is nice in the middle of everything or my line's nice in the middle of everything. Don't expect, you're not playing connect the dots here. You're just drawing a line that you think best fits the data. That's, called, that's why it's called a line of best fit. What score would you expect someone who slept three hours to receive? Well, let's go to three hours and see what dot we can find. Ooh, there's a dot right there on the line. So three hours goes to that dot right there, which falls in between 70 and 75. So we'll say 72, because it's right in the middle, 73. It's really an estimation here. It's really an estimation here, okay? All right, all right. Snowboarding competition. What year did 48 snowboarders participate? All right. Here are the participants. So 48 is going to be somewhere along that line. So that seems to line up with that dot right there, which lines up with that year in between 2003 and 2005. I think I can handle the math on that one. That would be uh, 2004. Thank you very much. Um, what word can explain what 2000 is? 2007 is. Well, let me see. 2007 is, oh, See that dot way out there serving no purpose? That is an outlier. An outlier is a number or a piece of data that doesn't seem to fit the rest of the data. This is a positive correlation, but for whatever reason, that outlier, maybe it was super warm that day, maybe there was a blizzard, maybe there was a pandemic, which is topical. Uh, who knows, but that's an outlier. I don't see any gaps here. I don't see any clusters. That's just the wacky outlier. What does the y-intercept mean? Well, the y-intercept is where my line, or in this case, my points cross the y-axis. So my point is right there on the y-axis. That has to do with the year 2000. How do I know it's 2000? Because the line after that is 2001. So at the year 2000, it looks like we had 20 to 30. So it's right in the middle, 25 participants. So we could say, and I'm going to try to write this out as best as I can. We could say it means that there were about 25 participants in 2000. Remember, remember. that your y-intercept is wherever your line or your data crosses the y-axis. And this dot is at 25 for participants, and we had to say 2,000 for the year. So what does the y-intercept mean? It means that there were two, 25 participants in the year 2000. The slope would mean how many participants there were more per year. All right. Oh. Now we have ourselves a two-way table that's not complete, okay? The numbers inside uh, are called the joint frequencies and the totals, and I like totals, the totals are the marginal frequencies. The way we find them is we add them. So we add these two columns, 45 plus 23 is 68. We add these two columns, 2 plus 54 is 56. 
in order to find uh, how many total people had cancer, we do 45 plus two, which is 47. In order to find out how many total people didn't get cancer, that's 23 plus 54 is 67. And my total, total, total people could be found by either adding these two or adding these two. Either way, we're going to get 114. All right. So I could say 45 smokers got cancer. Uh, two smokers got didn't get cancer. Or no, no, no. Two non-smokers got cancer. Uh, 47 total people had cancer. Um, there are 40 or 60... Eight total smokers. There are 56 total non-smokers. There were 114 people interviewed. You know, these are the questions that I could ask you. How many smokers got cancer? Well, let's go to smokers. Let's go to cancer. Everything lines up right here at 45. So that answers that. Is it safe to say that smokers are more likely to get cancer? Well, let's look at smokers versus non-smokers, 45 smokers uh, got cancer and only two non-smokers got cancer. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd say it is more likely. Because, you know, of all, of all the people who got cancer, 45 of them were smokers. So this is a quick one. This is a very quick one. 15 minutes, I believe there's like seven or eight problems. Let's do it. Lots of reading, though. The scatter plot below compares the number of car accidents in a month to the number of days of rain that month. Uh, what happens to the number of accidents as the number of rainy days increases? Well, without looking at the multiple choices, it looks like we have ourselves a positive correlation. goes that way. As the number of car accidents increase, or I guess we could say, as there are more rainy days, there are more uh, car accidents. So what happens to the number of accidents as the number of rainy days increases? Well, there are more accidents. There's a correlation between rainy days and car accidents, and there seems to be more uh, car accidents when there's more rainy days. What best describes the correlation? Well, let's draw it out. That is a strong positive. And if you're wondering, well, what's the difference between a strong positive and a weak positive? You could look at those dots and say that that is definitely a positive correlation. Okay. I can look at those dots up there and say that's definitely positive. I can look at the dots right here that I'm pointing at and say, or say, ugh, and say that that's definitely a positive. If you could say that that's definitely positive, then it's a strong positive correlation. If you're looking at these dots right here, and they're kind of like all over the place, but you're like, yeah, I, I guess it's positive, but I'm not 100% sure, that's when it would be weak. If you could definitely feel comfortable drawing a line like we could here, right in the middle of everything, then it's a strong positive. Otherwise, it's a weak correlation. And in this case, it's a positive correlation, so it's a strong positive correlation. Ms. Fletcher gave her students a vocabulary quiz at the beginning of the year. She then polled her students asking how many books they had read over the summer. Ms. Fletcher recorded the data in the scatter plot below. So it seems to me that we have another positive correlation. Here's my line of best fit. The more books read, the higher quiz score. So let's see what our options are. What describes the relationship between books read over the summer and vocabulary quiz scores? The more books read, the higher the quiz score. Boom, done. The fewer books read, the higher the quiz score. No. The number of books read equals quiz score. No. There's no no. Obvious. Easy. For a science project, Nicole counted fireflies each evening. She also recorded the temperature. The data are displayed in the scatter plot below. So I'm going to do my best to draw a line of... Holy cow! I'm going to do my best to draw a line of best fit. Eh, that's not bad. Uh, based on the data in this scatter plot, predict... 
the number of fireflies Nicole will see when the temperature is 100 degrees. So I, I, I need to extend this just a little bit more. Okay? So 100 degrees is right here. Hits the line right there. Which is around 18-ish, 20-ish. So based on the data in the scatter plot, predict the number of fireflies Nicole will see when the temperature is 100 between 60 and 20. 16 and 20. Okay. Which best describes the relationship between height and the number of books read? Well, I don't see a correlation here. So my guess is how tall you are shouldn't have anything to do with how many books are read. So let's see what our options are. Height depends on the number of books read. That doesn't make sense. The height of books or the number of books read depends on height. No, there's no relationship between books read and height. More data is needed. No. How tall you are has nothing to do with how many books you read. That's silly. That's silly. Because there's no correlation. Several students were asked if they have a computer at home and what grade they are in. Here are the survey results. The two-way table summarizes the survey data. What is the missing number in the table? So what we need is we need the number of seventh graders who said no. So let's look at the no right here and count how many sevens we see. One, two, three, four, count with me. Five, six, six. I don't think I missed a seven. Nope. Oh, I'm good. And here we are, boys and girls. The last one. Second to last one. The last page. Second to last problem. The scatter plot below compares the number of injuries during track events to the number of hours athletes practice before competition. Which best describes the correlation between the number of injuries and the hours of practice? Positive, negative, or no? Well, let's draw a picture. As the hours increase, the injuries decrease, so this is definitely a negative. Which shows the line of best fit? Well, the one smack dab in the middle. The line is supposed to fit in the middle as nicely as humanly possible, and that's what C does. A is kind of diagonally and too far up. B is above every number. D is below every number. C is just right. So the next video that you're going to see is practice. And I know on my YouTube, there's several practice tests for the PSSAs where you take all of your stuff and you just do it all. Do it all. Gotta do it all, says Pokemon. That's all I've got. I hope you had as much fun as I did during these eight packets. Uh, having said that, have a good day. Bye. Like and subscribe. Bye. Click the bell. Bye.